Hey the Barrys, welcome to my tips and trick video. We've got over 30 tips here, not just from gameplay aspects, but also other things such as the store and how to save money, how the crafting system works, uh, how to set up room pages before you're going into a game, and you know UI options, how to improve your uh, your gameplay and survivability in a game just through the UI options. Crazy, huh? So we've got tips here for brand new players and some advanced tips as well for the, uh, the the league player that has maybe played a little bit longer than the average and you know may have missed out on a couple of things. So uh, be sure to watch the whole video. And if you enjoy it and you particularly like support content, then I'm your guy. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and also have a look at twitch.tv slash Bizzleberry where I stream League and other games all the time. All the time. Be happy to see you and well, I'll let you see the video. Enjoy. First tip is free champion rotations and utilizing them as much as possible as a new player. So when you get first started out with League, you'll have access to even more champions on the free rotation just because it is a new account. Make use of these as much as you can before you do hit someone at level 11. Have fun testing out these new champions, experimenting with them, just getting a feel of generally what they do. You don't need to like master the champions or anything, just see what you kind of what playstyle you like. Do you like being an assassin? Do you like being a caster? Because that will identify what lane you are most likely going to be playing on when you extend further out into your league career. Leading on from the free champion rotations, we're going to be talking about blue essence and how you can unlock champions on your account for free. As you can maybe see at the top hand corner here on the top right, you can see blue essence 2400. Blue essence is the currency used to unlock champions for free in league. Above that is riot points and that is the currency used to buy champions or skins with real life money. So to unlock a champion with blue essence, you have two methods of doing this. When you level up in League, you'll obtain blue essence through capsules. At the start, you'll get a actual champion um, and blue essence potentially, or pure blue essence. And you go through to the loot capsule here to open these. So you get capsules that look similar to this. You'll open them up and you'll get blue essence and or champion shards. As you get higher in summoner level, you'll unlock more of these champion shards. As you can see here, I have accumulated a lot of champion shards. Uh, I have all the champions in the game, so these just kind of just bog down in my inventory. But at the start, you'll need these. So if you already know what kind of champions that you are looking to play, so say from the free champion rotations, you know, you've got an idea of what kind of champions that you want to have. Keep an eye out and see if you can get a champion shard with those. So say for example, you really liked playing Nico and you've obtained her as a champion shard. Instead of disenchanting her for blue essence and buying her from the shop, which would be around about 6,300 blue essence, you can upgrade her for roughly half the price if you have one of these shards. That's why these shards are incredibly powerful if you are a new account and you can basically save almost 50% of the value uh, and saving 50% of your blue essence so you can buy other champions later on down the road. So try and only uh, buy champions if you already have the shard and if you don't, maybe you know wait a couple more levels and see if the shard comes through. Um, you know, or if you want to, if you if definitely know you're not going to be playing a particular champion and you don't want to play that particular role, you can always just you know disenchant them, get the blue essence and boom, goes into your inventory and then you can go over to the shop to then buy those champions that you want to have. Moving on from the blue essence, there's actually another essence that we need to talk about, which is orange essence. Orange essence is the other crafting material used in crafting. So if you go past all the champion shards here, you can unlock skins, wards, and eternals with orange essence. At the bottom, you can see how many orange essence that I have. I have 4,700 of these essence. And as you progress and play through League, you'll get keys and you'll also get chests as you're playing. And when you open those chests, you have a small chance of, of obtaining a skin shard. So similar to the, the champion shards that we were talking up, up about there, you, this is a way that you can get skins for free in League. So as you can see here, I've got a few legendary skins. I've got a few epic skin shards here. So this is an Ash skin. I have many different options here. So I can, for example, disenchant her for orange essence and that gets accumulated at the bottom, which I have 4,000 of. 
or I could upgrade this skin to permanent. So I'll have this unlocked permanently for free on my account. All I have to do is pay the 1000 orange essence cost. So you disenchant the skin shards that you don't want. So if you're not playing a particular champion, uh, you can disenchant them. But I would advise holding the, the, the skin shards until you find a skin shard first that you like. And then disenchant, you know, the skin shards that you don't want to in order to be able to have enough to purchase a particular skin. You also have an alternative gambling mechanic as well, where you can take three random skin shards here and have a chance when you press this button here, it will roll a random skin that you do not own and will give it to you permanently. It could be anything, it could be any for any champion, even a champion that you do not own. This is a much riskier method. I wouldn't recommend doing this when you first start playing the game, but if you do end up spending a lot of money on the game and accumulating a lot of skins, a lot of people generally use this as a way to unlocking the, the best skins possible um, for almost for free. So this is a powerful tool when you're playing the game for a long time. Um, but you know, when you're first just starting off, just utilize this as much as possible to save yourself some real life money and getting some free content. Finally, in the crafting system, we have Eternals. Now, Eternals are a fairly recent introduction around about season eight, a couple of years ago. These were brought into the game as a separate kind of achievement system uh, brought in. Unfortunately, you have to pay for them with real life money, or if you're lucky enough to get an Eternal series capsule, you can open these which we'll do here. So I've unlocked an Aurelia series one, Shyvana, Talia, Udyr, some orange essence as well. And these Eternals, when you unlock them for your account, you can unlock them permanently if you have the shards of 300. It will track all of your stats, basically, essentially, for that champion in your game. And once you hit certain milestones, it will then pop up in game for you to show off. So these things can include kills or certain times or you landed this particular skill shots or turret kills and things like that so eternals are the flashy little achievement system per champion that you can potentially have so you know, eternals flashy but very very unnecessary so don't waste your orange essence necessarily early on unless for example you're a brand one trick and you're playing playing so much brand that you just want to show off then you know just try and wait for the eternal shard once again before you splash out on that real life money. Next, we're gonna be talking about the store and what to avoid and what to maybe consider if you actually want to spend real life money. My advice is to never buy these boxes unless you really, really want blue essence for some reason. These boxes are likely to contain only the champion shards. It's very unlikely that you get skin shards. And if you do get skin shards, you have no idea what champion you're getting it for etc so generally avoid at all costs definitely not worth the money for riot point value that if you're going to spend money i would highly recommend on whatever event that is happening right now so currently as of speaking there is an msi event where you can get uh, these capsules will generally contain very high quality loot you're still gambling a little bit because you don't know exactly what's going to be inside. But if you are going to gamble with anything in terms of your riot points, then these bundles are the best thing that you can do. Other bundles as well, um, sometimes when they release a new champion, they release like a whole bundle with that as well. I'd avoid the chroma bundles unless you are particularly well off and you really don't, money is no subject. Because say for example, this Lucian bundle would cost normally 3,670. Uh, that is because um, it's gone down in price because I actually own a champion. So if you own the champion in the bundle, the price actually goes down. They take off some of the RP costs as if you were having to buy the champion. But you know you can get a skin and then you're paying each for each of these, these chromas, um, which you don't need. And it adds a ridiculous amount to the price. So try and avoid these chroma bundles completely. Um, so, you know, generally you know, the, the safest thing to do is don't gamble honestly just find the champion that you want and buy it with blue essence ideally and then find a nice skin that you want and then buy that individually with riot points as going back into the loot system it is quite difficult you know to find that skin shard that you're going to get and then 
unlock it with orange essence. It does happen sometimes, but it is incredibly rare. And there's thousands of skins in League. So getting that one skin shard that you want for your one champion is 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 gonna be pretty rare, right? So your best chance, you know, is you know you're gonna have to use your wallet. It is a free game after all. These skin things are extra. Uh, but you know, spending about ten dollars, ten fifteen dollars on a champion plus, you know, a, a skin that you really want, that it it's worth it if you feel like you're gonna put the hours in. You know, it, it's you know, money is relative to each person, but this is the safest thing to do. Try not to get too lured in, lured in by those boxes. Finally, another good way to save money is occasionally, uh, about two or three times a year, they bring out a thing called Your Shop. Now, Your Shop is great because it specializes discounts on what you have been playing in League. So if you are particularly strapped for cash, then I highly advise you waiting for a Your Shop to pop up. As you can see, probably from this champion list, I play support a lot. We've been offered like Nami, Karma, Thresh, Zyra, uh, Leona, and Janna, all at, with various discounts. If you already own the champion, then the price will go down, uh, so you don't have to spend as much RP. But if you don't own the champion, it will offer you an RP cost for buying the champion that way. So if there is a skin here that you particularly like, but you don't own the champion, make sure you try and buy that champion first of Blue Essence. It will bring down the cost of these in your shop as well. And then you can then pick up a, a generally nice skin uh, for a much cheaper price as well than it would normally be. So particularly those 60 to 50% discounts are looking really nice on some of those champions. Um, if you already own some of, the, some of the skins, it won't show you skins that you already own. So, you know, you're always going to be something new, seeing something new and fresh from the shop. So this is probably the best way possible to save money and getting a decent skin out of the game. Runes. Runes are massive importance in League. These are some things that you can pick and choose before you go into your game. Now, if you know if you're going to be playing a champion, like in this case, I know I'm going to be playing Brand, which is a fire mage that can be played in mid or support generally. I know what I want to play, so why not get the runes set up beforehand? So you go, you know what you want to play before going into the game. You have an idea. Go onto a third-party website or have a look. Say, for example, if you play support, I write lots of support guides. Try and copy one of my rune builds and put them in in a page beforehand before you get into game that way you know there's no surprises here you don't have to overthink anything you can just go into a game and, and mentally clear out so if you know absolutely what you're going to be playing going into a game or you know if you have a couple of champions in mind you can you know set different pages for different runes so all you have to do is just click on you know what whatever preset that you want so you know in this case we're going to be playing brand and I don't have to do anything. I, I, I know everything that I'm going to be taking. Uh, for a new player, this is huge. If you're a more experienced player, you know, you only have to minorly tweak. And you don't have to spend too much time thinking about, you know, what runes I'm going to be taking. You can start thinking about, you know, what I actually want to do in a game. Or just making sure, you know, I've got no distractions near me. And uh, going into this game fully mentally clear. Another tip for getting ready for a game. This isn't sponsored, by the way. I know there's lots of content creators that are sponsored by Blitz, but uh, I'm just using it as an example because many people use this website, at least anyway, is, you know, getting ready with your runes and your items and things like that before the game. So we did talk about setting up the rune pages beforehand, but, you know, how do you get those runes? There are lots of third-party websites available to you. This is just one example. If you go over to, for example, blitz.gg's website, you type in a champion, say you're going to be playing Brand, Click on the champion. If you scroll down a bit, it's going to tell you what items that you need to be looking to build in the game. Like roughly, like these are what the most favorite kind of items to pick up are. Um, we've also got like the runes that you should probably be taking in your game, and even the skill orders. So just with you know a few taps of a button, it's going to tell you you know exactly all the information that you kind of need. Uh, these items you know are generally pretty decent. Uh, you can also flick around and have a look at what pro players have been doing as well if you want to go into a little bit more in-depth analysis. But generally the overview should give you a good indication particularly if you're a new player in learning a champion for a league. If you do want something a bit more in-depth particularly for the support role I do lots of support guides so make sure you have a look and see if I've covered that champion for you for the season. Now another tip 
moving into practice tool not a lot of people understand the the importance of practice tool and how beneficial it can be for you as a new or an experienced player you can access the practice tool by going to play and then going to training on the top left hand corner and then moving over to practice tool it will put you in an solo player kind of copy of summoner's rift but you'll have access to tons and tons of things and uh, buttons on the left hand side which can do things in like increase your gold uh, remove your cooldowns uh, put down target dummies and this allows you to practice some skill shots or um, experiment with some items um, that you may not have like, used otherwise just to get a feel of what things do in a game so if we go over to the left hand side you have access to all of these different options you can level up we're talking about the, the the refresh on the on the energies and the cooldown so you can you know spam abilities and test out the max range and things like that uh, you've got the level up as well you can level up all the way up to level 18 which is the cap so you can test out everything that you need to do and try out some fancy combos that you may have seen in some youtube videos Next, we're going to be talking about UI settings. So things on your bars and things that you can do to adjust to freshen up your gameplay in League. The most important one, I think, out of all the UI ones is the mana costs. So as you can see on my bars, on my Q, W, E and R, you can't see how much these, these cost unless you mouse over them, which you can't do in the heat of battle. So if you press escape and we go into interface, if you just scroll down halfway under ability and attack display, if you check show spell costs and then ta-da in the top right hand corner, you can see how much mana each of these spells are going to cost you. So for example, in brand, if I wanted to do a basic stun on someone, which would be an E and a Q, I know exactly that it's going to cost me 140 mana to do that cost. So I know that you know, if I'm on a 130 mana, I just need to wait just a second before I pop out of the brush to do that combination so that I know that I can stun my enemy. Other UI things that you can do also include the minimap. The minimap scale recently in season 2021, I believe, maybe season 10, they've enabled it so you can change the size of your minimap. Now, on default, it should be on 50. But I'd highly advise you actually to increase this number up to a higher value. This will do two things. It will allow you to see the minimap more, which you should be looking at most of the game, honestly. As you improve in League, you'll be finding out that you'll be staring at the minimap more than you know, your actual screen. But secondly, just changing the size of this occasionally, just, you know, change it up like a couple uh, one week and then move it back down a couple and then you just give fiddle it around like once or twice per week and your eye will be caught to it because it will be a different size and you know it will train you to look at the minimap more often so just by just by changing it to a few pixels it will make your brain think oh why well that's different and you'll be looking at it just a little bit more in a game next we're going to be talking about key bindings now key bindings are super important in league there are some crucial ones that you need to be learning throughout your league career the most important one is learning how to level up without mousing over and clicking on the pointy things at the bottom. So the best way to do that is on your keyboard on control, left control, and then doing the binding for whatever you have designated in order to cast the spell. So in my case, it's control Q, control W, control E, and if I was level six, control R. So these allow you to level up super quickly and on the fly. Uh, this is extremely important sometimes in some fights where you level up during the fight or uh, level two, like kind of burst situations where you know you just killed that minion really quickly so you can hit level two. Uh, it saves about you know a, t a fraction of a second but can make all the difference in enabling you in making some really nice plays off um, throughout the entire game. And you know if it is in the middle of the fight that you've just leveled, the next time you cast that spell is going to be a bit stronger, which uh, you know could make all the difference in a very very close team fight the next key binding i want to go with you is self cast not a lot of people know about the self cast um, but if you're playing someone that can like shield or heal in particular and you know you want to make sure that you're protected as quickly as possible the quickest way to do that is alt plus the spell so for example on lulu if i wanted to shield myself 
I would do Alt E. Or if I wanted to Alt myself, that would be Alt R. Very easy to learn uh, once you're used to it. So make sure you do that uh, if you want to keep yourself protected. Another little key binding that you can use is the S key by default, the stop moving. And it also makes sure that you don't attack. For example, if you also have like the auto attacking stuff on, so if you just move into a location and your champion just starts auto attacking a champion, if you press S, it stops everything, including your movement. So S is a really good way just to stand still, particularly, you know, if you're a support player as well and your AD carry is hitting minions, you, know, you don't and you don't want to necessarily push in, just make sure you're pressing S when you stand still, just to make sure you don't hit those minions. Another good key binding is the function keys, the F1 to F5. So F1 will always target yourself. F2 will do the the next per the first person on the scoreboard that's not yourself. So say for example, if I was the support right at the bottom here, it would target the person at the top. F2, F3, F4, F5. Um, if I was the top laner, it would be F2, F3, F4, F5. That way you can use like things like Shen ultimate or you know if you have some sort of global ultimate or in the middle of the team fight if you really want to do a clutch shield on someone with the function keys once again you can rebind these uh, then you, you can just you know use the function keys to, to shield an ally. Another important key binding is targeting champions only. You can find this key binding under hotkeys and as you get to the bottom here you've got target champions only right at the bottom of that list. And it's that little apostrophe thing here for me right next to my number one button. When you do press down the button, you're, you're the middle of your cursor will light up red to indicate that it will only attack champions or, you know, allied or enemy champions. So in the middle of a team fight and there's minions in the way, what you can do is you can hold that down and then do whatever ability you want to do. So in this case, I wanted to attack this enemy target dummy. With, uh, with an E, it would do that, or it can shield an ally with the E as well. And that way, any minions that are around, I won't accidentally target them uh, instead. this in, in, in Lulu's case, for example, the shield can be used on minions to damage them, or on your own minions as well to also give them your picks. So it is sometimes, in some champions, it's really important that you don't accidentally target minions. Uh, you know when the foes fights and champions are clustered on top of each other and finally we have a ping that is hidden um, You have to bind this. I found this on mouse button 4 This is the area is warded ping and this is a really really good ward So you've got your standard wards that you have you know, You've got your standard pings and your back pings and things but this one here this area is warded is Really good. It just tells your team that it's warded So say if you're playing bot side and uh, your jungle is trying to gank through to this tri brush here and you know there's a ward there you just think look there's a ward there don't go in there they'll see you like if you come through here you're obviously going to be seen there's a ward in there that's huge uh, it tells your jungler you know not to bother with that pathing or maybe not to bother you know coming down bot side to even gank at all uh, and it saves them a lot of time so you know basically essentially using this ping to stop wasting your teammates time uh, for a play that is unlikely to happen. Really, really, really good ping that one. Really good. Now some gameplay tips to try and encourage you to get better at League. Uh, you've got to have to put the time investment in League if you do want to get better. That's going to be with anything in life. If you want to get better at anything, you have to put the effort in. You need to be playing at least, you know, a few hours, ideally, every week. Ideally more if you have more free time, but if you're not playing on a regular basis, you can't expect to consistently improve at the game. So make sure you put the effort in. That's the most important out thing out of everything. And needing on top of, you know, playing League, make sure that you are staying tilt free. So that basically means make sure you're not distracted. When you're going into a League game, make sure you've got the time free. Make sure you've got 40 minutes free to even do a game alone. Uh, you've got to take into the fact, you know, you're going into game, there's going to be champion selection, not just the game itself as well. So Make sure you're accommodating real life so, you know, you're not going to be in a rush and making stupid plays. Try and make sure, you know, you're not eating while you're playing as well. That's obviously a key distraction to uh, just make sure all of those real life things are just, you know, what's for one side and they're not going to distract you in the game. That way you can focus everything that you need to uh, in League. 
also when you're playing league make sure you focus on yourself that is one of the uh, the key mistakes i see a lot of people doing constantly over analyzing what other people are doing on their team and forgetting all the mistakes and things that they've done themselves now if you're not aware of the own mistakes that you are doing then uh, you need to be looking at your own games which i'll show you in a second but it's just very crucial that you are crit you critical of yourself and always looking to improve yourself you know if you die in the lane ask yourself why is there something better i could have done could i have got vision uh, to stop the jungler from coming down and ganking me was it a mechanical misplay do i need to practice the champion a little bit more uh, you know do i need to do a bit more research background research on the champion by reading guides or uh, watching a couple of videos just to get a better idea and seeing how like how the high elo people do it so there's a lot always something that you can do to improve whether it's on the champion specifically what you generally do in the laning phase or you know around the map how you rotate how you move off of your lane going into the mid game there's always things that you can do and there's always resources online for you to do that so outside research is very important not just playing the game but if you you know if you've only got like 15 20 minutes free and you can't do a game research is the best thing you can do just watching a video of a high elo player going into a high elo stream if you want to learn about support you know i'm high elo support you can come and watch me um but you know this is the main way you can get better especially if you're very limited on time match replays not a lot of people know about this but if you go into your profile and you go to match history at the top left hand corner you can see all your recently wins and losses but if you click on this little icon on the right you can download a game which we'll click here and then it will be open to be played just easy as that you can then look at your own game and you'll have access to the replay tool now, the replay tool is extremely important if you also want to learn about improving yourself as uh you know at the game you have all the tools that you need at the bottom here you have this uh, timestamp, you know, of all the deaths that have happened in the game, and you can go back and analyze and go, oh well, well this Lucian died here. Uh, how, what could he have done? He could have probably not overextended the lane and maybe respected the Zed's burst a little bit more. But you can maybe go into a bit more in depth uh, on how to potentially, you know, improve yourself. Then we're going to go through some gameplay tips of League. The most important thing in the entire game is vision. Without vision, you are completely hindered in everything, including being able to see what's on your minimap and being able to make potential plays um, if you have or have not got vision. In this case here against this target dummy, this target dummy, pretend it's a champion, has no vision of this brush whatsoever. So, you know, for any unsuspecting you know person, you can easily cast an ability from a brush. They can't see me and then suddenly they're in a lot of trouble they've been engaged on without having an idea where the person is now this is the absolute basic you know concept of vision but it can also work the other way oh no i'm just minding my own business and then oh no suddenly you know i get engaged on because you know there's an enemy champion in this brush waiting for me so vision is an extremely powerful tool and there's a couple of ways that you can do to improve the vision or you know reduce the amount of vision that the enemy team has now the one thing you'll have access to from the very start of the game are the stealth wards that you get given for free on your trinket make use of them so you can see those pesky enemies uh, the main utility of using these wards at the very start of the game is to spot enemy junglers coming out of their jungle and looking to gank your own lane so putting wards in brushes is a good way to not only see um, you know where the enemy is coming from but also gives you vision of the brush so if the enemy does decide to hide in the bush then you'll see them so always try and put wards in brushes if possible it's not mandatory but it will give you an extra advantage also you have access to more wards as well if you go into your shop you can buy control wards that also reveal traps and other enemy wards as well so if the enemy had a ward in this brush, we put a control ward down, we would then be able to kill an enemy ward. This also helps detect some camouflage units as well, such as Evelyn. Um, so this stealth ward can be a pretty good tool at detecting some stealth champions as well. And it's pretty much mandatory that you pick up one or two throughout the laning phase and one or two later on into the game as well to help spot those champions and help clear vision for your team. 
Control wards are particularly powerful as well for in this example here. You know the enemy team cannot have vision of you in this bush. So they do not know if you're in here or not. So they have to respect it because if they come through and face check this, then you have the upper hand. You can engage in them first before they can react. So you know, not only does it tell you that they, that they don't, they can't see you in the bush, but also that they don't have vision there. So you are completely in safe in terms of vision unless they have spotted you walking into this brush from a different direction from a different ward. So most of the time you're going to be safe in a control ward brush. Next we're going to be talking about the importance of turret plates and how they work in League. So at the start of the game for the first 14 minutes you'll see these little five segments here on the turret. Now each segment gets harder and harder to kill as you progress onto the turret but every turret plating you do manage to knock off you get increased gold for yourself. If there's a teammate nearby that has recently hit this turret, that you also share the income of one of these plates. And as you see here, we're going to hit this turret. We're going to get the plate, and then we get money. But as we, as I mentioned, as you get onto each plate, it gets harder and harder to kill. So this is only for all the tier one turrets. The first turret in each lane, mid tower has one, bot lane turret has one, and. The top lane has one. So we've now claimed two turret placings from this turret. You can work out roughly how much uh, each health plate has. But if you look in the top left hand corner, each of these tier 1 turrets have 5,000 health. So every 1,000 health you knock off, that equates to a turret plating. So you can kind of see how close you are in order to getting the, the turret plate. Pro tip. Don't overextend too hard for turret platings though, because you know, especially on the later stages of these turret platings, you can spend a long time trying to hit these turret platings down. And it takes such a long time that you could definitely get a bit of trouble not only with the turret, but also by you know enemy teammates coming through and playing on onto you. So don't get too baited. Once you get down to this kind of mark with the last two platings, the turret platings get extremely difficult to remove. Once the game hits 14 minutes exactly on the top right hand corner, these plates will be removed and you will no longer get bonus gold for hitting off these plates. So the, the more plates you can get off early in the game, the better, but just don't get baited by them because uh, you don't want to die for them. That would be bad, right? Some extra methods of team play and gameplay mechanics. So if you aren't aware, on the top side and the bot side, you've got Dragon and you've got Herald at the start of the game. Once it gets to 20 minutes, Harold will despawn and will spawn Baron. So we'll talk about Harold first. So once you killed, kill Harold, it will spawn a little emblem that you can pick up and it will replace your trinket. Now Harold isn't too bad to kill. After you know you hit her for a few seconds, that little eye at the, her back will spawn. If you can get behind her and auto attack it. You will take a massive chunk of HP off and you do the same again here. You just keep doing that and that's the best way you're going to be able to kill her. Let me just give myself some more HP. I'm invincible. So once you do finally kill Shelly or Riff Herald, she'll drop a little trinket for you. Now bear in mind, whatever team last hits Harold is the team that will be able to pick this up. This will despawn after a short period of time. So you need to be quick to pick this up. But when you do pick this up, your trinket will be replaced with Eye of the Herald. And with a short channel time, you can drop this in a lane. Like this. And then she will charge a turret. Now this is particularly good at the start of a game when there's turret platings on, as mentioned. You'll get kill you'll get credit for all minions that she kills and any turret platings that she does claim. So as you saw there, she took off two turret platings. So we got 320 gold instantly for free. And now she's died. So it's particularly good, you know, just to get some extra income for whoever you know wants the, the, the gold off of Herald. Um, Harold can potentially spawn twice in a game if you kill her early enough. She has just over a five minute respawn time. If you hold tab at the top, you can see all the different buff timers, uh, dependent if you have had a vision on them on the smaller camps. So the red buff and the blue buff in each jungle. So this one here, this one here. So if you had a vision on them when they died, 
These will then appear as timers on your top hand side. The Herald and Baron and Dragons will always show up on the timers for everyone regardless whether or not they've had vision or not. A tip if you're Elena and you're looking to last hit, also known as CSing. So when you last hit a minion, you get the gold. Like then I failed to last hit so I didn't get anything. But if you last hit a minion like that, you get the gold. If you don't last hit the minion, you'll still get the experience points needed for a level up from the minions, but obviously you won't get the gold. So it's extremely important that you use abilities or auto attacks in order to last hit minions in order to get that gold. A good way to practice this in a practice tool is taking a champion that you play regularly and don't buy any items on, on them and just go straight into the lane and just practice auto hitting with them um, or you could maybe like use some basic abilities in learning and how to last hit. You're not going to be perfect, you're not going to land every single last hit on every single minion but your goal is to get as many as possible as you can and as efficiently as possible. One that, look at me go, I'm amazing. And you'll be looking to do a lot better than this in your uh, in your minion CS training. But it's the most efficient way where you haven't got the pressure of enemy champions landing skill shots or things. It's just you and the minions. And the reason why you don't want to have any items is just because it will teach you to last hit at the perfect moment. You know, obviously when you're in a game of League of Legends, you can have more attack damage and more ability power. But this will give you absolute training and good practice for the very start of the game because that's when it's the hardest last hitting is where you've got no bonus attack damage and these minions you know are pretty tricky to kill sometimes at the very start of the game so it's really really good practice if you go into your favorite champion and just try and last hit and it's really good practice i recommend doing this if you're a new player at least once before you go into a gaming session just for like five five to ten minutes the longer you spend you know obviously on this the better that you're going to be getting um, so don't forget like around about 15 uh, to 20 minions is potentially a whole kill. So if you miss out on a couple of waves of CS, then essentially you've missed out on a whole kill. So, you know, it's literally free money just being wasted. A couple of tips for when you're actually in game. I would highly recommend once you start getting into that mid game, once the laning phase is over, you start playing with your team as much as possible. Now, I've definitely been in that situation where I've been in AD carry and I just want to, I'm, I'm, feeling, feeling, I'm falling behind and I want to try and just last hit minions the entire time to catch up in terms of gold. But honestly, most of the time you'll just end up falling behind in gold because, you know, your team will start getting caught out. The enemy will get more gold from the kills and then, you know, they're getting more money from the kills than you are from last hitting minions and the gap just gets bigger and bigger. So my pro tip is try and get involved as in many team fights as possible with your team as much as you can. Try not to do too many solo split pushing plays. Um, unless you are playing a champion that excels in it particularly well and you are pretty fed, you could get away with that. But honestly, try and play with your team as much as you can, even as useless as you may think they are. Um, it is the, the the highest chance you have of winning a game is winning those team fights. And then you can bounce off to those other objectives such as dragons or barons, you know, etc. Or moving on to turrets with your whole team and cleaning those out faster because uh, it is a team game after all. Uh, you're not the only person playing, there are nine other people playing, so make sure that you are working with your team still and looking to make plays with your team, no matter what. So you want some advice on what champions that you want to play in solo queue? I'm more than welcome to give you some champions that are doing quite well right now, uh, just to get you started on some champions, depending on what you want to play. So firstly, we talk about some of the assassins. Ari is a champion that you can get access to really early on for free in Lee. She's a decent mage to be playing in the mid lane and labeled as an assassin because she is quite fragile, but she has a lot of high burst. She's quite squishy, um, but she can do that high burst, high mobility, get in, get out. Uh, kind of situation. If you want to play a slightly different assassin that is doing quite well at the moment as well, in the jungler you have something like Kane, quite high yield, quite high mechanical champion to play. If you're looking for someone a bit more basic that is a you know quite a good assassin at the moment is Nocturne. Nocturne's ultimate makes everyone's screens basically almost go black for a few seconds so they can't see whether the teammates are and it ca cause a lot of paranoia. Uh, in the enemy team and you can do a lot of nice things with him as well. 
If you're looking for something a bit more bruiser type for the top plane or even in the jungle still, you have like a Darius is right now doing particularly well. I believe he can be accessed quite early for yourself for free in those rotations or through the uh, the leveling system that Leak has. Um, also in the jungle, you've got things like Lee Sin. Lee Sin's a pretty fun jungler to play if you do have access to him, but you also have the classic Master Yi. He's an extremely easy champion to play and honestly a favorite among a lot of new players just because of the simplicity of his kit is mainly just involving around auto attacking. So not too much to uh, to worry about there. If you want to play something top, like a really strong like uh, tank in the top lane, then Nasus is pretty good at that too. He's pretty tanky and also does a lot of damage as well when you stack up his Q by last hitting minions with his Q. Um, as the game gets goes on longer and longer, he gets stronger and stronger. And because of the way his Q works, you can last hit minions easier as well. So really good start to champion Nasus, and I believe he is extremely low cost on the blue essence as well. Moving down into the mages, the generic mages, you have the Ari, as we mentioned earlier, she's a mage assassin. Uh, other easy to play um, mages include Brand as support. You can play him in the mid lane as well if you wish. Very high DPS mage. Uh, not too much uh, to worry about too much in his kit. Uh, as long as the person's on fire, you can land a stun with your Q. High damage um, and you know, can be played in the mid lane as mentioned before. Uh, another easy mage to play as well in the mid lane or the bot lane as like a AP carry. You've got Heimendinger. Heimendinger is pretty easy to play. He's got turrets that, that fight for you. And you have rockets and explosions and things to do there as well. He's basically essentially only really got three abilities um, on his toolbar. So really easy champion to play as well. And you have the famous Karthus. Another recommendation that uh, you know, very easy to once again last hit in the mid lane. Or if you play, you can play him jungle as well with some pra jungle practice. But... For now, start playing him in the mid lane if you wish. Easy to last hit minions with, with his Q. And even when you're dead, you can still cast spells around yourself for a few seconds. And his ultimate is a global. It targets every single enemy champion on, on the map. And with a if you channel this ability off, everyone on the enemy team will take damage. So it's a really good way to snipe kills off onto those other lanes on the map. Moving on into the supporter type roles, we've got some really nice support champions that you get offered early. You've got Lux that can also be played mid. She's a she's a very good mid laner as well, but you can also play Lux in the support role. Lots of crowd control and lasers and, and high amount of damage and shields. Morgana is an, another champion that is extremely, uh, you know, good to play. She's offered once again quite early and, you know, if you don't have her, you can buy her for a low blue essence cost as well. Uh, her kit involves a shield, you know, with the shields once we mentioned again in the key binding, self-casting shields are super important. So make sure you understand how to do that maybe before you pick her up. But, you know, but has a really nice binding, decent amount of magic damage and crowd control. Highly recommend picking up the, this champion in the support role. And also Morgana at the moment can be played in the jungle. So there are some flexibilities as you can see with some of these champions being able to be played in a couple of different roles. And then moving down into the marksman, these are the AD carries generally played in the bot lane with a support. My recommendations are Ash for a new player. Ash gets offered once again quite early. If you don't have her, very, very cheap on the blue essence, like in the low hundreds. Um, very easy champion to play and get you started off playing the AD carry role. Otherwise, you can play things like Misfortune is relatively easy to play as well. Uh, Tristana is another champion, slightly harder to play, but very cheap on the Blue Essence as well. So if you're if you're tight on the Blue Essence and you want to try some Marksman, then Tristana and Ash are very good options to try out in your games. Next, we're going to be talking about the importance of dragons in League of Legends. So on the top left-hand corner, you can see the team has obtained three dragons for themselves. A Cloud Drake, an Infernal Drake, and an Ocean Drake. At the start of the game, a Drake will spawn, and then a different element will spawn from the previous one, and then a different element of the previous two will spawn, and that Drake will continuously spawn until a team has killed four dragons in total. 
So in this case, the blue team has killed an ocean drake first, then an infernal, and then a cloud. And there will be only cloud drake spawning from this in this game onwards. And because the enemy team is on three dragons, if they obtain a fourth one, then they would obtain the cloud soul. So getting four dragons is really, really powerful for a team. It gives you a passive that sticks with you throughout the entire game, even if you do die. In this instance, the cloud soul gives your team bonus movement speed. And when you use an ultimate, you also get further bonus movement speed. So if the enemy team, in this case, the blue team were to obtain uh, the, the fourth trick, they would get pretty powerful. So it's the other team's job to try and deny them from picking up that fourth dragon. So you can see the red team in this case are uh, heading over to the dragon to prevent the blue team from obtaining this a final drake for this cloud soul. Red team in this instance successfully defend the dragon and they prevent the blue team from getting the dragon. When a team does get four dragons, it will spawn the Elder Dragon. And this dragon is designed to end the game for everyone. Either team can get the benefit of the Elder Dragon. So it doesn't matter if uh, if your team is the one with the Dragon Soul or not. If you do obtain the Elder Dragon, it is just as powerful for either team. So it's very important to fight over. An Elder Dragon gives you and your auto attacks bonus uh, attack damage uh, on abilities it leaves a lingering damage the debuff on the target so a little dot and if they are under a certain threshold of health they get executed with the elder dragon so an extremely powerful sword to end games and that's why the dragons can be so heavily contested throughout the entire game now similarly with the baron buff Baron buff can also end games as well. So killing Baron gives your whole team that are alive a purple buff, which gives you ability power, attack damage, and buffs your minions in your lane to be stronger so that they can take more damage from enemy champions and more damage from the turrets. So this can give you some real pushing power in order to close out the game so utilizing a Baron buff uh, with your team is super important. Now the downside is if you do die, then you do drop the buff. So if the enemy team are able to kill a few people that have the Baron buff, then your team's Baron overall potential will go down considerably. This is a lot different compared to getting a Dragon Salt or the, uh, the Jerkin Soul in particular, because that doesn't uh, fall off when you die. But the Elder Dragon, if you do have, similar to the Baron, if you do die with an Elder Dragon buff, you do lose that buff. You can obviously then reclaim it if you can next, next kill another Elder Dragon or another Baron in the future. Um, but do be aware, aware that you do need to be alive uh, when the objective is killed to receive those buffs. And you obviously, you know, don't want to die and it will eventually time out as well so that the enemy team can outlast a baron or elder dragon if they are able to put up a suitable defense so here in this example you can see the effect of baron buff if you notice the red minions have changed they've turned more purpley and the cannon minion has got extended range now these minions as mentioned are tankier they do a little bit more extra damage so they are able to survive but if you do move away from the minions they do end up losing that purple baron buff with the extended range on that cannon minion you can see here that the cannon minion is hitting the turret at a massive range and it allows you to just let the the, the cannon minion just have a go at the turret at a safe distance if the enemy are not putting up a suitable fight and you're worried about having a team fight I hope this tips guide helps you out when you are first playing League and maybe one or two newer players learn something particularly in the UI section on how to improve your gameplay a little bit. But the number one tip that I can give you that I'm leaving and ending off here is have fun. There's no point playing this game if you're not having fun and the fastest way you're going to improve at anything is if you're enjoying it. So if you have a few rough games and you're feeling pretty down, I would highly suggest you take a break and then maybe come back to the game in a short period of time because the worst thing you could do is you know you get sad and then you might take it out on a few teammates and then you end up getting your account suspended so don't make that that mistake make sure you're always having fun with playing this game 
and it's okay to experiment as well as long as it's not in ranked you can ex always experiment around in normals and have fun and you know if you have any friends be sure to play with them as well as long as they're not toxic so i hope these uh, these tips helped you out maybe you learned something new let me know if you did and um you know let me know if you want some more of this like kind of new player kind of friendly tips uh, i'll see if i can muster up some for the specific lens um, but hopefully the the general overview here gets you going for a good league future if you are interested in more guides make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're interested in support specific things which, which i main then have a look on the channel you might find a few support guides that you might be interested in such as like brand that we were talking about earlier lulu and you know anything else like nautilus and, and all, lots and lots of different support things so hope the video helps you out hope the channel helps you out and uh, look forward to seeing you again soon